Um, so you guys just announced some new characters. The characters of uh, Commander Tysis and the, the, that sounds a lot like the crew of a starship. Um, can you tell us anything more about them? And are they the original crew of the Protostar? <laughs> nice question, but we can't tell you any of that. <laughs> and you're wrong. <laughs> I can, say, I, I, can say, I can say he's wrong on what he just said. We have to, yeah. keep, we have to keep our details tight on that one. Oh, yeah. Top secret. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I yeah. tried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aaron, go ahead. Yeah, this question is actually from 12-year-old Emily, who's going to be co-starring Discovering Trek. Yes, who I so spoke she... directly on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, good oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. Uh, so she would like to know, was Prodigy an idea you brought to CBS, Paramount, Nickelodeon, or were you asked to develop a Star Trek show for kids by them and Prodigy came from that? The latter. Secret Hideout came to us and said we would love to figure out an entry point uh, for the Star Trek universe uh, for a younger audience. Um, and then, and then Kevin and I kind of went away and then we came back and said, we'd like to make this show and they were enthusiastic about it. And the rest is yeah. on the screen. Just to, just to add to it at first, we were like really nervous about doing a Trek show because I, like, I don't think I could write, you know, an episode of let's say Voyager. But when we left that meeting, we were like, well, what would, what would we do? And we decided, wait a minute, if these main characters are outside of everything Starfleet and they start to discover it and learn it and stuff I'm like that. That's really relatable. It's a wonderful uh, jumping off point for kids, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Because most shows, they're always these fully formed officers who just know everything, right? They're the best of the best. I think what, the, what kid is the best of the best? I think the first <laughs> thing we would say very early on is we don't want to work on Little Kirk, Little Spock. Like that—that that sounds like a that sounds like a terrible show. Yeah, I'm sure it has an audience, <laughs> but we don't want to write that. Yeah. Dana, thank you. Hi, thank you so much for your time. And uh, on that take, like uh, doing the show for the kids, what was like the most challenge? What was most difficult to adapt from a grown up to this a kid show? Well, we always try to blur the line. I mean, we don't, we, we never really view it as a kid show. We view it as a show for people who don't know Star Trek, which could, you know, could be, be young or old. Yeah. Young or old. Um, and so we always had the perspective of the outsider and that freed us up. Um, we wanted to keep, we wanted to keep the stakes real, you know, for an older audience. We, we never want to dumb things down for kids. Kids are really smart and uh, they may have a learning curve in this show, uh, but, but they'll get there. I think the hardest part is the balancing of the tone. When you, it's really hard, I think, as a writer to get that tone that will hit everyone, right? The comedy needs to be smart. The storytelling needs to be really clever. You know, it can't, you know, it's got to work for both kids and adults. So I found that that's always the challenge. But a lot of Star Trek already is, a lot of Star Trek are, already is great for all ages. But this, you know, every there's always a few episodes that might not be appropriate for kids, and and our show, I'm sure, will will avoid those episodes. Thank okay. you, Trick Core. Hi, right, thanks, guys. Um, when you came into the show, uh, you know, especially based on your previous work, you sort of had an animation style that um, you're known for with with these productions. Um, what were some of the challenges in translating? Um, you know, the live action world of Star Trek into your style of animation for the series? I mean, it, it's, you can't necessarily say we have a style of anim. I mean, I guess you, we have a, a pace and of tone, but like we've, we've worked with other um, directors and art directors. So each one has its own um, feel and look to it. Uh, but I, I lost the thread. What's the... I was going to hand, hand it to yeah. Ben to answer. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, More for, the, for, the, for your 3D style of animation yeah yeah and and you know i don't i don't think we necessarily try to carry through a certain or specific style from something else as much as trying to create something you know a new that would capture all the elements that we're looking for right so it's kind of work looking at the page looking at the the intentions of the character and the the ambition of the show as as a story and as as character driven story and then how do we kind of like best capture this with animation 
you know, and therefore we 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 decided to go, you know, very cinematic in terms of the scale of the adventure. We wanted to have something that was, you know, uh, uh, that would fit really nicely within other Trek shows because we're canon, where it is a continuation. So we wanted that that realism of the world itself feel as realized as other Trek shows, you know. So that also dictated. You know that started dictating kind of like how we would design the world itself, the background, how lived in it is, how tangible and texture it is. So you know, it's I think those are the different pieces that we've been looking at doing. You know, character design. We wanted to have something that had a sufficient amount of um, detail, facial detail, being able to emote very much, so we could really kind of like you know focus on close-ups and emotion. Uh, as much as the danger and the stake, the fun, the adventure, all of these elements we wanted to be able to shoot it at any distance for it to look good. So again, those are the elements that I think have, have come together and made the look of Prodigy, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I think, right? Ashley? Hi, um, question for Ben. Uh, so you've directed many short films and series, and, and and a lot of those are based on other works like uh, Heavenly Sword and Harry Potter. Um, how do those experiences um, compare with directing uh, for a longstanding franchise like Star Trek? Um, in in some ways, uh, I mean, thank you, thanks to to Kevin and Dan and and Nick and and Nickelodeon and, and Paramount. I think there was. There was a lot of, of excitement, enthusiasm, and freedom in terms of, of really create something that did not necessarily need to mirror anything prior to it, aside from tone, uh, you know, respecting rules in terms of what the world has established. But in terms of like visually creating imageries, you know, we really were uh, very, it was very flexible, very organic, and therefore very creative. Uh, I can say the same, you know, for the Harry Potter uh, animation, for example, where we made an animated version of, you know, a fantastical world and therefore that, but that piece of content did not exist, you know, in that mythology yet. Uh, and I think it's the same here. We're, we're, we're adding a piece of the puzzle without having, we're not duplicating it. We're just creating an addition to it. Uh, and by doing that and using a different medium, it just gives us a lot of a lot of you know lateral movement. You know we can go back to the known. We can explore the unknown, uh, and hopefully just marry the two uh, in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. Okay, gig. Yeah, um, is Captain Janeway the only hologram that you guys actually considered for your show? And are there going to be other appearances of other characters from Star other Star Treks? Well, first of all, one hundred percent, we knew it was Kate right away. You know? We knew it right after it was like kids who don't know anything about Star Trek and then Kate Mulgrew. She's like, it went in that order. She's she's loving but disciplined, you know. Um, she just fit that perfect uh, mentor, we think, for a bunch of wayward kids. Um, and let's just say, yes, there will be other holograms, but I don't want to make it sound like legacy characters who might show up in our show are going to be holograms. Our kids are starting in the Delta Quadrant and they're venturing into Federation space, the Federation space of all the other shows, you know, at that time period. So um, we might see real characters coming in, you know, not as holograms. Thank you. And Brittany? Hi. Uh, so I was wondering, since it's been revealed that it's an NX experimental class ship and one with a cadet training program, are there going to be new surprises for Trek fans that are, are already watching the show and for, you know, the new crew as well? And obviously without spoiling. <laughs> there, there, is, there is some big secrets about the ship that will be explored. And it's, it's uh, the season rev result revolves around some of those secrets, so. I think even like, you know, even though you guys have seen the ads and you knew Janeway would show up, when we first wrote the pilot, no one had any idea until you get to that last page and all of a sudden Janeway shows up and it was really, really shocking. We love mystery. We love moments like that. And there will be many more. Ahead. Awesome, thank you. 